Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and we're coming at you with another Wargaming in Miniature video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the blend, the British Bomber, the Bristol Blenheim, the Blenheim Mark IV. Now, the Blenheim appears in Blood Red Skies in the basic box set as a counter, right? You have a counter to move on the table, you have a stat card, uh, and you would normally just put a base on its top to show that it has disadvantage or advantage. You would not actually fly the counter on top of it. Uh, that is Blood Red Skies, and that's what we're talking about. Now, Blood Red Skies comes with one 200 scale Spitfires and 109s, but they have a variety of other aircraft available as well, and one of them is the Blenheim. Now you can get the Blenheim model and stand and stat card in a box, you get three in a box, from Warlord Games. Well, I wanted to seek out, before they released that, I was seeking out uh, other options, and I found that Zvezda releases a Blenheim Mark IV in one 200 scale, which is exactly the scale that uh, Blood Red Skies is. And so what I'm going to do today is we're going to review the model kit of the Blenheim. I'm trying to find a good spot where the glare isn't on it, right? Uh, we're going to try to find... There we go. Now, Zvezda is a Russian company, and they make some pretty good plastic 172nd scale models that I've used uh, Napoleonics. Uh, but what we need to do now is take a look at this plastic model. Now, just looking at the box, I'm seeing that it's going to come with a, a really high flying stand, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, or you could do with the gear down, which I'm not. I'm going to have gear up. It's going to be a flight thing. Uh, and it says it comes with an aircraft stand, a decal, one decal. I don't see it on here. Maybe it's one decal sheet is what they're talking about. And then an unplanted airplane. Okay, so they also make others like this JU-88, which I'm going to do another video reviewing the JU-88. But right now, this says no glue required snap fit. Whoa, super awesome. Let's open up this package. I still have it shrink-wrapped. Now, I bought this from... I think it was Hobby Link. I, I buy a lot of my plastic model kits from Hobby Link. I buy a lot of my modeling supplies like super glue and X-Acto knives, balsa wood, stuff like that at Hobby Link. I strongly recommend you go check out Hobby Link. Uh, they're a great uh, resource for flock and everything else uh, model related. Uh, Okay, so enough of that uh, shilling for them. Let's go ahead and take a look at this box. Oh, what I was trying to get at was, I think I spent like five bucks for this. Maybe five dollars at the most. I uh, bought it a couple of weeks ago. I've been meaning to do this video for a long time, but I uh, just hadn't had the time. And today I have the time, so here we go. Okay, so we pull out everything in the box, right? And the box is, I mean, I could... I could pretty much say, cut this picture out and post it on the wall. It's a nice looking artistic depiction of the Blenheim. I'm digging it. Okay, moving that off. Obviously, the stand, which I'm probably not going to use because I'm going to use the flight stands. Okay, and pulling out. Okay, it's got some clear pieces, probably the cockpit canopy. And then a decal sheet. And the decal sheet looks pretty nice. One, 200. Perfect. Set that off to the side. We'll get into that in a minute. Now, I'm not going to assemble this model today. That's not what I'm here to do for you. I'm here just to kind of review what you're getting inside of the Blenheim. Now, remember, this is a Russian company, but they have the instructions in both Russian and in English for us, you know, us Americans or British that uh, only speak English. Uh, uh, this is a great Battle of Britain. Uh, what does it say? This set is... This set and appended card are included in expandable game system Art of Tactic Operation Barbarossa 1941. 
What? It's a card? Art of Tactic. I might have to look up that. Is that a game that I don't know about? I don't see a card. Okay. Operation Barbarossa. Isn't that the East Front? Okay, so maybe uh, the Blenheim was used in the East Front. It's possible. Okay, uh, the system consists of many different sets of vehicles, figures, and airplanes. Operation Barbarossa is, is a starter for the game where you find detailed rules, game boards, additional game accessories, and different scenarios. You can increase your army, play scenarios, and improve your tactics and skills. Game system is being expanded. Svezda must be working on a new game system called Art of Tactic. I know that they made a game... Uh, Back in the day, which was kind of... Mm. Okay, so they got it artoftactic.com or zvezda.org.ru. So go check those out, man. I'm going to go check those out later. Okay, so it, it looks pretty simple. I only see like three steps to put this model together. You've got the cockpit, underside the cockpit, the glass. Then you put the wings on. And this is implying, okay, you got to assemble the, the engine systems first, left and right. That's what I would do. And then put the wings on, the turret, the tail wings, landing gear up or down, because it gives you two options, up or down, and you're done. Okay. Hell, I'm not going to put this thing together on this video. Okay, that's not really what this video was designed for, but... Give it a shot. Looks simple. Okay, I can't do a real full review without actually assembling it, can I? All right, let's do an assembly. All right, guys, I went ahead and got some glue and got my uh, plastic snips. And I like right here where it says, you can use glue for plastic models to more reliable connection of details. So um, I'm glad they gave me, gave me permission to use glue. All right, so let's go ahead and get, oh, let's go ahead and take this stuff out of the Ziploc bag. Uh, we're gonna assemble this. All right, I've got two videos in one, a, uh, a review and an assembly. We're not gonna use that just yet. Okay, so we're gonna grab the fuselage. Okay, now um, the fuselage looks like it's gonna take the canopy first. And the canopy looks like it's got a ton of these little injection mold tubes you're going to have to cut. Looks like two per. And don't be afraid to use the picture of the actual plane or, or a diagram or, a, uh, or an artistic representation of the plane to give you an idea of how this model should, should look once you're complete. Um, I do that a lot with like historical models even even uh, sci-fi i do that by looking at how other people or how the uh, game company has assembled the model so it, ma it makes it easy for me to put together okay the okay there's one other clear piece right here what does that go on it goes on nothing i don't see an oh is that the turret oh that's the turret okay well i'm going to cut the turret out just because I'm thinking about it, it's a little bitty piece right there. Which is also going to get painted. Okay, so that's the turret. Okay, now, if you know anything about super glue and models, super glue will turn clear plastic like this white and milky. That's why a lot of model professional model makers will use like an Elmer's or a white glue whenever assembling a cockpit. That way, because white glue dries clear, where super glue will actually, because of the, I don't know, the fumes, it kind of dries the plastic out and it makes it uh, turn white. Uh, you've probably seen that effect and you didn't know what was causing it. Uh, don't worry, I'm going to use the super glue on it because, like I said, I'm going to prime this and then I'm going to spray paint it 
so I don't care if it turns foggy or smoky or whatever you call it. I always like to test the fit first before I start a... Uh, yeah, that goes in pretty straightforwardly. Okay, let's drop a... Ooh, I can smell that super glue. And I use the thick stuff so it doesn't run. There's a little notch and a little hole, actually. And... There you go. Just, I actually heard it snap when it snapped in. Now, I know the glass in the front should be smooth or flush against the fuselage. It should not be tucked in like it's showing. I've stopped using plastic cement, uh, I don't know, 20 years ago. I've never had success with like testers plastic cement on plastic models. I've always had success with super glue. Okay, this like right side doesn't want to go in properly. All right, so now I'm just going to put a little a few little drops and maybe couple of lines but mostly in the little holes and when cutting it off the sprue you might always find that there's a little bit of extra plastic that you just have to trim just be prepared to do that back snapped in okay let's put a little glue along the side here line everything up Front part doesn't want to snap together properly. Okay, I don't know if you can see this, but see how the bottom of this fuselage, it does not want to press together. I, I mean, it will press, but then it'll just pop right back out. Okay, luckily I had some uh, clamps that I've had laying around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of glue in there just to reinforce what I'm trying to do here. Okay, I'm wipe most of that off. And then I'm going to use one of these clamps to apply some pressure on that. So that it'll uh, dry sealed up. All right, so let's move on to the next step. What do we got? I finished that whole front page. Number one's done. Now, before I can go into number two, I'm going to have to work on these wings. So let's go ahead and get the wings taken care of. All right, so now once I get the wings cut off, I do want to go again and make sure right where those sprue lines are and the sprue uh, injection molding where it connected to the sprue and I had to cut it off. I gotta make sure that's trimmed off so it, so it looks good. Now this is a full wing. This is an upper and a lower. This is not like uh, overly complicated. They don't need to make the top wing and then glue to the bottom wing, you know, like a lot of model kits will do. They'll just give you extra parts just to give you something to do. Uh, this is more like um, a quick and easy kit because you're going to be uh, gaming with it, right? They know this. They A 200 scale World War II model, they pretty much know, hey, this, this guy's going to be war gaming with this thing. And maybe with their own war game, you know. Underside, the engine part where the landing gear would go, where we get tucked up underneath. And remember, I'm going to do raised landing gear. I've already cut every part out just to make sure, you know, just to do it all at once. I just cut everything out because there was only six more parts left, pretty much. There's the... One of the propellers. One of the propellers. Looks like it's done. 
and then the tail fin wings and jazz and stuff. Okay, so now we're going to assemble one of the wings. I'm going to go ahead and put the glue down where there might be some connection. Perfecto. This one. I'm just looking at how the wheels would connect. Yep, this is this one. There's probably a slight difference in angles. All right, now I know the instructions say to glue these onto the fuselage, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to I'm going to break the rules. I'm going to glue the top the wheels inside the uh the engine these can only go in one way, so it's pretty self-explanatory how they go in. So that's no problem. Done. All right, now there's something I wanted to, before I, before I attach these to the fuselage, I wanted to touch on this subject. I'm putting this plane in flight, right? It's not going to be landed, so it's not going to have its wheels down. It's going to have its wheels up, and it's going to be in flight. So when I put these propellers on, I'm actually going to cut the props off. I'm not going to leave them uh, just three props sitting out. But the only reason why I am putting the props on here is because of the, the uh, propeller cap. The little cone that sticks out the front of the engine that covers the propellers. I wanted that to be glued in there. And then I'm going to go through, once I get that glued on, I'm going to go through and just pop these propellers off. I know some people will take like clear plastic and they'll put it around there to kind of make it look like the propeller is spinning and all that. Um, that's pretty cool. I don't need, I don't, I'm not going to worry about all that. Uh, none of my other planes that are in flight have propellers. I mean, because they would just be sitting there. You know, okay, now this guy doesn't want to go in. What the hell? What the hell, Zvezda? There we go. It's going. There, it's in. Had to bend the propellers to do it, but guess what? I don't care. I'm cutting them off. There we go. So you got your propeller with the propeller cap, you know, um, sticking out. That's what I wanted. All right, so while we're waiting for that to actually finish drying, which apparently is taking a little excessive amount of time, I'm going to go ahead and pop the back wings, the turret, and the side wings on, and we'll see how easy that is. Should be fairly easy. Okay, once you get the sides on, the, si the propellers on, no, what are the propellers? The tail on, you got to kind of push them in. So we're pushing the left against the right will kind of get them to snap into place. There we go, snapped into place. Now we got to get the left and right wing. Uh, these these uh, models are going together really easily. If I wasn't recording this, I probably would already be done. Okay, that wing went in super easy. Both wings went in like super easy. Okay, last thing I got to do. That's a, actually, it's not the last thing. It's the next to last thing. I'm going to need to put the turret on there. And if you notice on this uh, model, the gun is already part of the fuselage. Remember not to cut that off. Because when you put the turret on, it kind of sits over... Glad I didn't lose that. It sits over... Wait, that's not the piece. Okay, that's just a lesson for you guys. These small pieces... I thought this thing dropped on the floor. And... I searched the floor tirelessly for a good five minutes before I was about to give up 
and then I noticed it was resting on my tripod, <laughs> one of the legs of my tripod. Oh my gosh, because that's a little tiny piece. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that sucker glued down. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue. There's a little hole behind the gun, and then there's a little pin on this turret piece which I'm sure goes down inside that little hole. Okay, now, you'll notice, this is the part I was talking about, you'll, you'll notice on the model, or maybe you won't, but uh, there is a spot, a little hole right there in the bomb bay where you would normally put this flight stand for this thing to fly, right? But because I'm planning on using it as a wargaming model, using these flight stands. I, I have magnetized my flight stands, so I need to magnetize the bottom of this model so that when I put the model on there, it'll just magnetize right on that exact spot. Okay, now this is the drill bit that is the proper size for these magnets. Uh, I'm going to drill into the bottom of this model, but I'm gonna try not to drill all the way through I just want to make a little spot for the magnet to rest into, but not to fall all the way through. So I don't want to do excessive. That's why I'm doing a little bit at a time. I'm not really even applying any pressure. I'm letting the drill do all the cutting by itself. And then what I do normally is I'll put a magnet, whoopsie, put a magnet on there like that on the base because then I'll know that it would connect to the base properly. And then I'll glue this end into the model. Okay, so now you can see that I've got the magnet right there where the stand would be. We're gonna let this dry for a few minutes and then I'll be back and show you my final thoughts. All right guys, well, here it is. It's the finished model. It needs to be uh, painted, but uh, I've got it on a magnetic base, uh, and I've, well, I put it on George Preddy's base, but uh, that's because I used a larger magnet on uh, George Preddy than I did on the Spitfire, and the Spitfire magnet, the Spitfire base magnet wasn't strong enough to hold this. It is slightly heavier, but as you can see, it's doing just fine on the base. I'm gonna lower this down just a little bit so you can All see. All right, so you can see how it's on there. And we're going to compare it to the model that's, or the uh, cardboard that's actually provided with the game. If this is the proper scale, looks pretty good, doesn't it? It fits right on there, right where it belongs, right? Good deal. And then it snaps on there pretty easily line it up if you're going into a disadvantage state you can do that and the base is big enough it's not falling over not with this plastic model if it was a metal model it probably would let's do a climb whoops yeah or an advantage state looks good no need for an extra base uh, so really all I need is the card which comes with the game and I could buy $5 models instead of having to buy that, uh, what is it, $25 for three models? Something like that from Warlord. Uh, the advantage is it does come with the bases and it does come with the card and uh, like the trait cards and things like that in the uh, boxes. And it might even come with a scenario sheet. I'm not exactly sure what else it comes with. But as an alternative, I think these uh, Zvezda models, they're just, they work just fine. All right, guys, I'll be coming back at you with another video, maybe in a week or two, on me painting this when I get some free time to do that. And then we'll paint it, and we'll put these decals on there, and then we'll see how it looks. All right, guys, thanks for coming out and checking out this video. If you like my channel, please like, and if you want to subscribe, please do that. And if you want to join our channel, please do that as well. All right, I'll catch you next time.